Good morning, everyone. I hope your day is off to a good start. NVIDIA is reporting earnings today and the market is fairly flat. Quantum stocks are trading mostly sideways with a little bit of sell off. A couple new tickers that I want to cover today. Quantum Emotion. A lot of community members on the channel have been saying Majid cover Quantum Emotion. So I've added it to the watch list and I'm looking for an entry on Quantum Emotion. I'm going to show you guys a recent news article that sent this stock much higher. I'm also going to cover a stock that I've never covered before, Joby Aviation, another similar stock to Archer Aviation. I want to look at NVIDIA's chart and I want to look at D-Wave. So we're going to do all this real fast. Let's jump right in. If we take a look at the stock heat map today, we can see everyone is just patiently waiting for what this guy is gonna do. What's Nvidia gonna do? Is Nvidia gonna come out and beat earnings and beat expectations? Or are the tariffs and all the headwinds they've been facing gonna catch up to them? Are they gonna give guidance that the Wall Street isn't going to like? It's kind of a little bit of a, we're on a little bit of a precipice of this, as it always seems, NVIDIA earnings are so important to the wider market because it dictates the whole ecosystem of tech and AI demand. So every time NVIDIA reports earnings and does well, it tends to. So let's hope that NVIDIA has good numbers and has good guidance. What about our quantum watch list? So our quantum watch list, we can see that for the most part, we're trading sideways giving a little bit of gains back and quantum emotion, which has been a high flyer QNCCF. And this is the first time it's showing up here on the quantum watch list is down 15%, but it's had something like a hundred percent move. And we'll look at that in the chart and I'll give you my analysis on potential entry points. So Joby aviation is an electric aerial ride sharing company. And I'm a big investor in Joby and they are, Essentially, it's it's in the similar vein of of Archer that they are building the aircraft of the future. So think air taxis, think drone, but with humans in it. And this is what companies like Joby and Archer are doing. Now, so what's making Joby pop so much today is because this electric air taxi maker has closed a $250 million Toyota investment that they previously announced. Payment is part of a previously announced deal from the car maker to invest $500 million in Joby to support certification and commercial production. So very cool to see a big company like Toyota investing in the future of aerial travel. It's So the two companies that I own in this space are Archer and Joby. So what has Joby done in the charts today? It's flying high. So yeah, yesterday it was trading at 680 at market close. And on this news, as of the time of this recording, it has made a 28% move. Let's look at the, let's look a little further back at Joby and see what this candle, the significance of this candle. So we see back in December when the market was in its full bull run and stocks were trading kind of at their close to their all time highs. We see that, that there's a significant amount of price history for Joby between seven fifty and $9. So we have a pretty clear level here. So we have this pretty clear triple top, quadruple top actually for Joby where it's rejected off of 930. The significance of today is this gap up and we're getting close to this area of Joby's nosebleeds. So what happens from here with Joby is I could see something like its prior performance based on the price history we have. So if I grab the chart here, and I map out a scenario, I think in a base case, what we would see is just a rejection off 930 and some chopping around. So if we look at former price history, we could see something like this for, for Joby in a base case. Now in a bullish case, if Joby is to continue with their certification process and there's other catalysts, we could see it break this 930 and then start to use 
930 as a support and maybe it could make itself a $10 stock and hold at $10. We can see that only use 930 as support once in the past. Otherwise, 930 has been a resistance. So I would need to see Joby go above 930 and hold for it to be uh, in this new nosebleed area. All right, let's take a look at Ion Q. So Ion Q had some pretty sharp sell off at open. We saw that yesterday. It closed at 48, which is pretty impressive. And let's measure this downward move. So we had a downward move of 7%. And it looks like there's an intraday rally. If we connect this rising support from the bottom of the rally to now, looks like we're at about 46. So still on the day, we're down 4% from close yesterday. And I think this is natural and healthy for the stock. In fact, if we zoom out, we can see that this is trending with some price history we have on IonQ in the past. So we know that IonQ at one point was sitting right here in this channel. So very good sign of things to come because what happened next for IonQ is it went in and made its all time high. So I like this consolidation for IonQ. I like it just moving around in this 44 to 48. If you ask me, the longer it stays in this channel, the better for the stock. All right, let's take a look at QBTS. After earnings, we gap up and we've been in this steady uptrend. And we gap up again. And we've almost touched 20 bucks. And lately, we've just been kind of hanging around this 1722. Now, to me, this the point that we're currently at with D-Wave is fine. In fact, we should all be grateful um, that it isn't selling off more. Um, I think if it can hold in these channels, that would be great. So therefore, my base case is just further chopping around between 1650 and maybe 1762. In a bearish case, we could come down to 1612, break through that former level of support, and then 1612 would become resistance and move down to 1496, where we have tons of price history and bounce and bounces off 1496. I think buyers would definitely step in here at 1496. Now for QBTS to retest its all-time highs, it's going to need to get above 1780 and start making a rally. And it's going to meet some serious resistance at 1910. So in a bullish case, we could see something like this. It's going to bounce here and then potentially it could go back into price discovery. But it might need a new catalyst or other tailwinds from the quantum industry for that to happen. All right, NVIDIA. So NVIDIA is currently trading at 135.71 going into earnings right after market. And let's look at six months of NVIDIA. Actually, let's look at one year of NVIDIA. So if you've held NVIDIA uh, 139, 140, 135, you, you have basically just chopped around. Um, and the problem with holding NVIDIA, and I'm a big NVIDIA investor, is the opportunity cost. So in the last year, NVIDIA has done pretty much nothing while other stocks have made a lot of gains. So you can see that there is a pretty, the stakes are pretty high for NVIDIA here. So if they come in report earnings today and the street doesn't like their guidance or if they miss, then we could see a serious rejection. We could see, we could see it come down aggressively. People are not afraid to click the sell button on NVIDIA. I think a lot of investors are frustrated with the single stock performance. And uh, now the opposite could be true here as well. If we look, so that would be the bearish case. If we look at a base case, then we would just continue chopping around 120 to 135. Now, if we look at a more bullish case, which I would tend to lead bullish with this NVIDIA. And, and in fact, I'm putting money behind the bullish case here because I'm keeping some 140 call options open through earnings. So 
those calls would essentially capture any upward movement above 140 after earnings. And I've, and I've decided, you know what? It's been a long time. If we look back one year, I think it's time for NVIDIA to gap up to 150 and do something like this. And, and price and uh, price targets from analysts range from 165 to 190. But if they're able to come out and crush, they are the sun of the universe of this AI revolution. They are the sun. So uh, I, I invest in the sun because the sun is needed for other planets to survive, for life to exist. So I'm hoping to see a very bullish reaction from NVIDIA. Um, maybe I'm taking some hopium. Okay, so quantum emotion is a new stock and it's in, it, that I'm covering for the first time is the sole public company in quantum communication space. Quantum emotion is paving the way for better cybersecurity with its proprietary high throughput technology. And they have this high quality security and quantum safe future communication, which you love to see. And then quantum emotion is based out of Canada, I believe is in Montreal, Quebec, Canada. And they just had this article that sent the stock flying. So we saw this on Quantum Insider. Quantum Emotion finalizes QRNG hybrid chip design, commences manufacturing with TSMC. And TSMC is a huge player in, in all of this. So Quantum Emotion has completed and validated its first generation QRNG chip design based on quantum tunneling, marking a key milestone towards scalable quantum secure hardware. The chip now submitted to TSMC for fabrication integrates validated components from ETS Montreal and Sherbrooke and is capable of generating over one gig a second of true quantum random numbers. And what did the stock do on this news? Well, let's look back at one month of price history. And this is a penny stock. So you, we have to be really, really careful with penny stocks because one penny is 1%. A dime is 10%. A quarter is 25%. So if the stock flushes, then you lose money really fast in penny stocks. So I'm always cautious when entering any sort of trade. So from a price history perspective, if we look back uh, all time, the highest this the wick has ever touched here is 160. But we see this massive, massive gap up. And this tracks, this tracks with ARQQ, LAES, quantum cybersecurity, there's going to be increased demand in the future. So this is a young company that's trading at a basically a pretty low price, I think, compared to where it will be in five to 10 years. So then the question becomes, what is entry? What is a safe entry? And there's no such thing as a safe entry with investment. All investments carry risk, especially tech investments, especially quantum. I want to point that out. You should always set stop losses and you should only invest in things that you are comfortable with and you've done your due diligence on. So what I'm looking at personally today is that quantum emotion is down 20%. So I've set some price alerts and I'm tracking this downtrend. And the reason that it's down is because we saw this move really basically overnight of 128%. So if we look at the RSI, we were an overbought condition. So that means that the stock was purchased way more than it was sold. And now we see that now we're getting to a more healthy point where now we're actually a little bit oversold and we're at a dollar oh five. Now this gap up, this what we're looking at here is because of this news, the the uh, TSMC and the QRNG hybrid design. So my target, I'm looking my buy window is so I don't feel in a huge hurry to purchase this stock because when's going to be the next catalyst for this? Will it continue flushing down as people 
uh, continue to, to take profit? Does it come down and break below that key psychological level of a dollar? Um, that's what I'm kind of looking at today. I haven't made an entry into this position yet, but a dollar oh six seems like a good balance between uh, kind of getting in here somewhere in between this rally and gap up while also all the people that sold up here um, have sold and I'm just kind of looking at and evaluating quantum emotion. So let me know in the comments if you own this ticker and what you like about the company. Of course, I don't know everything about everything and I'm learning all the time. So, uh, yep, a bunch of you had said in the comments quantum emotion. So there it is. Anyway, that's all I got for you today. We did five tickers in about 15 minutes. Hope you enjoyed the content. Good luck in the market.